Hello, my name is Bob Budiansky, and you are listening to the Marvel Card Collecting Podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Taylor, and you are listening to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast, your weekly digest of hobby goodness. Stop it. Brought to you by the Marvel Cards Fan Collective, an awesome community of card collectors and creators. Oh, no, I can't take you anywhere. Uh, You can find our two groups on Facebook, details of which are at the end of this podcast, so come check us out. With me, as always, is my co-pilot in all things Marvel Cards. Baby, you and me, wouldn't you agree we've got a groovy kind of love? We've got a groovy thing going. He's got a groovy little hippie pad. So step on that groovy train with Norrin Rad. The I, agreement to my restraining order states very clearly that you're not allowed to sing at me. I don't I don't want to bring okay. it up and be awkward, but like it seems I, 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 I did stop short like of singing. You did. You did. I okay. did. I did. I guess we're okay I then. I went deep in, in Googling songs with the word groovy in the title. <laughs> Because I kind of, I was just feeling a bit groovy when I was like getting ready for this episode. You know, I thought we were going to be in the groove, you know, smooth. No. Wow. Wow. You're just, you're just kind of looking at me. I'm, 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 I'm looking at you, blinking, which is not good for a podcast. I'm just like, wow. No, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. But yeah, you wouldn't believe how many songs have the word groovy in the title. You wouldn't believe how, also how many of them are from the 60s and 70s. Well, I guess you would on that point. I guess but, I, what? <laughs> yeah. You know, it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it okay. is what it is. Yeah. I've, I've flummoxed you already. You have very quick. Have. It's early too. Perfect. It's, I think we're it only early like for you. two it's, minutes into the podcast. It's a, well, it's early in the day as well. So and and also you're you're snowed in, I believe. I am snowed in. I am snowed in. I had to clear a driveway. Uh, my body's not made or nor tailor fit for manual labor, so that was a little difficult. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm a little snowed in over here. Kind of crazy. East Coast uh, got showered with lovely, lovely snow, so it's pretty fun. Pretty fun indeed. Yeah, but, it, well, yeah, well, that, that, that interesting here. story has ended, so that's, that's nope. over there. None of that over here. It's always a good sign when you start off talking about the weather. Anyway, uh, the reason I went uh, with the groovy thing was I was thinking of you know, the other week, as we're talking now, it was two weeks back we recorded it, and I guess it's probably about two weeks since listeners heard it. We did the Hobby Questions episode. <sighs> where we so had much all those Yes. Fabulous questions from people. And one fine young man, uh, one rather groovy cat, groovy fellow, because um, it was the word that came to when I was reading back what he sent us, was, was groovy. Um I don't know why, and I will promise I will get off that rather. I just think of Evil Dead. I just think of Evil Dead every time you say groovy. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, ah. I don't like. Am I? Am I gonna like alienate you and? No, half no, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. I just, I just, just. I've tried. Please don't I've tried. say it. I've watched Evil Dead please. one and two, and I just can't. Oh, I just can't so get on with it. I just can't get on with it. Don't see what all the fuss is about. Johnny's a huge fan of Evil Dead, so I hope I hope you're ready for that fallout. Okay, all right, all right. Well, the young man that's with us, let's let's ask him what he thinks. Um, David uh, De La Rosa, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, that's right. My name is David De La Rosa. Wonderful. And do you like the Evil Dead? No, no pressure. No, I, zombies are cool, but uh, I, no, I I don't watch too many movies like that. And I mean, I'm aware what? of the Evil Dead is out there. Zombies are cool, but uh, eh. what am I doing? <laughs> not really my thing. I the only, I'm, that's it. That's it. I'm jumping out my window. That's the end of this. Well, I, I, I like sleep. zombies. I like zombies, but there's there's I don't know. Is Evil Dead zombies? It's more kind of like Spawn of Hell, isn't it? Oh my God! You know what? Can we just stop? It's deadites, okay? I don't know how much Dead more eye. of this I can take, okay? You guys are stabbing me in the heart, okay? In the heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, how are you today? You're right. Yes, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, and uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Oh well, well, I'm, I'm more than more than doing well seeing your lovely face. Now, you, you, uh, whereabouts are you? Where, where in the world are you? I'm in New York, uh, in the Bronx, in New York. Oh, nice, yes. nice, I've been in New nice. York for my whole life, and I'm still here. Okay, uh, all right. Born and raised. Born and, born and raised. Good, good, good. Um, and you, um, 
uh, obviously we talked about this before you came on air, but but you do you want to say what you do for a living or is that yeah secret? sure sure I, I'm I'm a surgical tech. Ah. So I work overnights at, at one of uh, the major hospitals here in New York. I work in the labor and delivery unit, and I assist in mostly uh, cesarean sections. Goodness me. Goodness me. That's a lot well, of work. Fine. Dude, yeah, that's fine work as yeah, well. That's a, lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Good. And, and you're joining us after having worked like a 12-hour overnight shift or something crazy like that? Uh, 11 to 7. 11 still, to 7. We're still. Yeah. <laughs> Probably feels like twelve hours. Uh, yeah, it feels like twelve hours, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. If Thanks, at any I'm point we, and if at any point we do see you starting to nod, Norin's got a really long stick and he can poke you. Um, I'm okay. a lot further Stop. away and the stick doesn't handle the curvature of the earth quite so well. Excuses. Anyway, let's. let's <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, all right. Leave me alone. Anyway, it's cold. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you sent us the most fantastic. Um, set of questions. I'm, I'm clapping because I'm excited because I'm just it starting was, to read it them. Was really cool. um, and it was, uh, I don't mean this in a bad way at all. It was, it wasn't a set of questions. It was, it was an essay. It was brilliant. It was lovely. It was wonderful. And I said at the time, we should like devote like an episode to kind of some of the themes and things that you you were talking about. Um, and uh, I don't mean to embarrass you in any way, but I, I think it was no, brilliant. No, no. I loved it. Um, so you you start now. I'm going to dip in and out of it. I'm not going to read it verbatim because, mm-hmm. as as we said just before we started recording, you know how you felt then when you wrote it, which was probably a month ago now. You yeah. might not feel today, and you know you're not in that moment anymore. You're in a different moment. You're in this moment with yeah. us all together, all together. Yeah, I was just expressing myself. You know, you you posed the question out there, and uh, you know, yeah, I wasn't really in the mind state of what's the best '90s set or what was the best binder to use. I was really <laughs> thinking about you guys and about our social space and our yeah. dynamics here and how we interact with each other. And yeah. that's what I was really caring about. And I was interested in what you guys had to say about it. Well, I, I love it because there's, there's, two, there's two key phrases I lifted from uh, uh, all, all the gorgeousness that you wrote. And one was social dynamics, which you just touched on, and the other one was social approval. And I really want to get into both of those. Um, so um, obviously, you know, you start off, uh, what are your, some of your thoughts regarding the social dynamics at play in our car collecting community? Um, so before we get into that, I mean, you started off by saying that you've, it's been kind of a, a year since you joined in the in the fray as it were so so what what do you perceive having coming into it kind of relatively fresh yeah um you know i collected cards as a kid as as most of us did and uh, i guess it, my collecting came in stages so you know I, I was a kid eight ten years old i bought packs at the stores some of my friends had cards my cousins had cards and you know, it was a great thing, childhood memories. And, you know, you, you go to junior high school, high school, you sort of forget about it. You get into girls, you get distracted by all types of things. Uh, but for me, after high school, while I'm in college, I'm, I'm working multiple jobs. I found myself back in the hobby on my own time. I had extra cash on me. You know, I was blessed enough. I was still living with my moms. And... Um, I would use all this cash and I would get on eBay and I would buy video games and sneakers and comic books and trading cards. And I was doing that from like 2009 to 2013, really heavy. For me, in the eBay space, I was learning about the market and I was seeing how I could get deals on some of these cards and I can quote unquote flip them. And, you know, I was... But it was all a, a personal, uh, individual thing that I was doing. No one was motivating me to do that. I wasn't told. I wasn't seeing any groups doing it. It was just my own thing. I was just picking up some of the pieces of, of things that I didn't have the opportunity to get when I was younger. And I had this market on eBay to, you know, I had this access to all these products and items. And... I, I I jumped into that space um, on eBay and I was collecting cards and I was throwing stuff in my closet and building sets and I was selling cards <laughs> as well. And for a long time, well, I'm saying a long time, but uh, I, I find myself buying sketch cards 
uh, throughout this process. So initially, when, when I was first got on eBay, and, and I'm sorry if I'm rambling a bit here. No, you carry on. We, we do it every week. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just to think back, yeah, when I first got on eBay around 2010, I was buying sets that I, I, I never had access to prior. So when, when I was younger, uh, the only set I had completed on my own was the 94 Spider-Man set. Mm, now, one nice. time I went to a comic book shop with my cousins and one of my aunts, she, she blessed me. She gave me a $20 bill. She said I can have whatever I wanted. And I bought the Spider-Man set. They had it in, encased and it was a full set. And I was very excited to have it. And my cousin took a couple of the cards he needed and left me with an incomplete set. But that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not holding a grudge whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but aside from that one set, you know, I only had a couple of cards that I bought randomly at the stores. You know, a, a pack of you know, Zero Trax Men or Marvel Metal or Flare. No real sets. And and again, like as I said, you know, you sort of forget about that as you get older and you go to school. But when I had my own cash and, and I could do what I want with it, I found myself on eBay buying all these sets, all the Marvel universes, all the Marvel masterpieces, you know, sets I never even saw at the store. I never even saw these packs, but uh, they were available for everyone on eBay. <laughs> yeah. And, man. Uh, so I had my own personal experience buying my own cards and uh, selling cards, trading cards. And, and, and within that time frame, within that space, I got hooked onto sketch cards and I found myself every other week and every month searching for sketch cards you know that would be my my key search term marble sketch card or marble sketch or just sketch card and uh when I, whenever i was bored or i had some downtime i would search for sketches on on ebay and i would comb through all the listings 2000 or whatever thousands of pages and i did that for years and and through the sketch cards i i learned about the different sets you know, um, I, I think of myself like a casual collector. You know, I'm not on all the websites or within the forums checking out when release dates are, are dropping. But in searching for sketch cards, I became familiar with all the sets that, that were released as time went on. So, you know, I'm looking for sketch cards and then I saw, oh, sketch card from the Fleer Retro set or a sketch card from the Premiere set or the Rain House sets. You know, a lot of these sets had sketch cards attached, and from my searching for sketch cards, I uh, I learned about those sets along the way. And again, this is all on my own. I don't have any friends in the space. I'm not in any chat rooms. And my cousins, they don't collect cards anymore. I'm just doing this on my own. But I fell in love with the sketch cards and, you know, just what the artists were bringing onto this card that you know all these other cards are mass produced and everyone can have them and you know there's some limited edition cards some rare chase cards but again everyone can have them but not these sketch cards you know they're special one-on-one -on -one items that you know just mean something when, when you get them for me um again i'm rambling a bit here but 2020 comes around the pandemic i find myself online more i find myself uh, watching YouTube videos about Pokemon and how Pokemon is exploding and about how their cards are getting graded. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I dabbled a bit in Pokemon, but I wasn't never that serious into it. Uh, so I, I did a deep dive, you know, I'm watching all these YouTube videos. I'm getting familiarized with, with the products, the sets, some, um, some random websites I've never been on before. I'm downloading apps. I'm buying cards, I'm buying graded Pokemon <laughs> cards, and I, and I find myself in the Facebook groups of Pokemon. And, you know, a lot of the posts are just like, oh, I found this in my grandma's basement, and how much is this worth, and what's the best grading company to go to? And I, I kind of got tired of seeing all those posts. And I, I, I think what really happened is that I, I just wasn't really connected with Pokemon brand. <laughs> you know, with the product like that. And because of that, I I said, you know, what do I care about? I care about Marvel cards. I care about these sketch cards. And so I just did a quick search through Facebook for Marvel groups and uh, Marvel cards. And then that's how I found you guys and other groups, too. 
And, you know, I, I joined and it's been amazing connecting with, with, with all you guys and seeing the different avenues that people have taken and, you know, how people like to collect and the opinions they have on things. And, <laughs> you know, just, just, just being a part of this community has been I don't even know what what to say. It's been it's been a blessing, honestly, for me, just just to find like minded individuals that I can share, you know, share ideas and opinions and uh, this love that we have for for these cards for for whatever various reasons that that may be. But um, so yeah, that that was like at the end of 2020, and then comes 2021, and I find myself in these groups, and. <laughs> it's been quite quite the experience because uh, my collecting ways have have changed. You know, I, I'm I'm picking up from how other people are collecting. You know, I yeah. I started watching your videos, Norin, on YouTube, and you know, you 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 enlightened me about rainbows. I had no idea about rainbows. So, you know, I ventured out and I got me a rainbow card. Nice. <laughs> You know, and, you know, and I, and I saw how people were grading cards and I started to dabble into that on the Marvel scene. And, you know, it's just it's been great. But then it's 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 almost like this bittersweet feeling because. As much as I love these cards, as much as I love collecting them and having them and sharing them. I, I find myself in this space with all these people and personalities and it's just like, OK, what am I doing here? Am I, it, you know, I was, <laughs> I was the conductor of the train as far as collecting went, and now I've got all these people on board here, you know, pulling me from side to side. <laughs> me, oh no, that yeah. those cards aren't valuable. These are the most valuable ones, or you know, oh, you know, it's just, it's just all the opinions, and it just didn't exist for me personally prior to 2020. You know, I, I didn't people. care what anyone had to say. Didn't have that either. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, this is so funny. And I'm sorry, I, I was just rambling on a bit. I, I think. No, no, don't, no, 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 no. Please I'm don't stop because <laughs> don't don't stop because this is kind of very apparent from the comment you made in the Facebook group, which has got us. And I, I've spoken to you on and off here and there. Um, and you know, your comments on my videos is funny. <laughs> you know what I mean, and all this stuff. <laughs> so. I love it. Um, you know, so pl please, you're you're not rambling on. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I think uh -huh. you're absolutely right, man. Like it was like that. Like I, I think in a strange way, people will look back. It was weird. Like I don't know if you remember Scoundrel back in the day. You know what I mean? Scoundrel is it? Was that connected to blow up? Blow. That's it. Out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's not. No, yeah. it's separate so Scoundrel. To blow out. It was separate it's to separate. blow up, but it was yeah. kind of like the moment the connectivity was that you went from yeah, scoundrel yeah. and then everyone went to blow out. You know what I mean? It just like kind of like that that migration happened uh, for collectors. Um, but there is this kind of strange thing where there was this really nice little sweet spot. You know what I mean? Where all of us kind of had this thing to ourselves and um, it has changed immensely. And that's what I love so much about your comment, too, is like there was those big questions. You know what I mean? Um, where, you know, how do we feel about as a, as a community, right? Because that's the thing I value the most here. I got to be honest, I've told Ian this multiple times that Ian and I <laughs> have spoken off camera, be like, nope, I'm done. I'm out. I can't take it anymore. I'm over it. <laughs> I'm bouncing. And we both had to be coming back and forward with each other be like, listen, hold on. Let's talk. Let's get back in our circles of like friends that are actual <laughs> like there for us and who you know we don't butt heads with and you know we we align how we think about marvel cards you know and the funniest thing is to hear people every time come on this show talking about getting packs when there are kids that's my favorite part about what we do in this podcast because it's so crazy i don't know about you guys and this is going to be really dorky and like feelings feelings and i'm sorry you know uh <laughs> hashtag feeling alert um but like for me Man, I, I would have given anything to have friends around me who were collecting Marvel cards like you guys. Like as crazy as that sounds, man, it was definitely it was definitely something I valued a lot. And it's so crazy to see so many people around the world that are also kind of like, man, 
these cards, right? <laughs> when we were kids. It's just it's such a crazy good feeling to have that. But no, you're not rambling at all. I interrupted you because I was just excited. But yeah, man. Yeah, it is crazy. I think it's quite interesting because there's a, there's an element of, of of what you were saying where it's like you found us, and yeah. then almost in the next breath it's like you found us. Oh no! <laughs> um, because I, I, one of the one of the points you were making was the fact that because you're my mind is drawn to something that and I, I can't remember what it's called now. And you, you you're you're a learned man of science, so you you may know this. The the theory that the act of observing something changes its behaviour and its properties in itself. I can't remember what, what that's called. Is it Heisenberg principle or something like that? Anyway, I'm I'm rambling incoherently in my own time now. But it it was it was something that you said in 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 your post that in the year that you've been there, you found that the interactions and the the people's people's opinions and views on what you have and what you show and what you buy have kind of altered maybe the course of how you think about your cards or, or i mean i find that a fascinating thing i mean tell us about how how, how you've kind of found that and and and, and yeah if you've got any examples i'm just curious really just to hear you talk about that aspect well well you know prior to joining the groups uh I, I didn't have anyone to to share my purchases with. You know, I, I didn't care with any what anyone said. I I would go on eBay. I would scroll through. I, I'd find a card. I, I'd look at it. I'll sit with it, and I'm mean, like, yeah, this works for my collection. I want it. I, I'll take it. I'll buy it. And you know, I was happy to have it. I'll put it in my binder or my drawer, and then and that was it. But, you know, you get online, you get on Facebook and you're seeing the posts and the likes and the comments. And it's like, OK, if no one's liking that post, then maybe no one likes those cards. Or if that post is getting all these likes, then maybe those are the cards that I should be going after. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm not so heavily influenced by that. I'm not seeing people go right and, I, and I'm going right. But um, I, I guess... Part of it is also with the whole grading aspect, where I found myself grading the the Marvel cards. Well, not grading them, but purchasing graded cards. And for me, it was just, it was just an experience. You know, it was just a different experience. It was just like taking my collecting to another level. And I really wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm going to get rich off this or I'm going to sell it. <laughs> it wasn't like that, guys. Or it really wasn't. And it, it's hard to even have that sort of conversation now because everywhere I see, it's like the cards are attached to the money and how much you can mm. make and what's it going to return and then what's the potential. <laughs> you know, and it's I don't want to say it's comical because this is real life stuff. You know, people are making big bets on these cards. Mm -hmm. But um, when I started to play around with, with purchasing graded cards and specifically uh, 90 Marvel Universe cards, and you know, I gravitated towards the SGC ones because they were just cheaper. They were more affordable to, to obtain. And from my mind, you know, 90 Marvel MU cards are just worth a quarter or less. They're, they're junk, you know? But... I from from seeing what was happening in the Pokemon space with the graded cards and graded comics, I kind of saw the value in like putting that one item in that case and putting the grade on it and saying, you know what, maybe in the binder in the closet it's nothing, but here in this one case, look at this guy. This is really yeah, special. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, I I, I kind of saw that and and I felt that. And I started to pick up a, a whole bunch of 90 Marvel Universe cards in SGC slabs. And and I felt good about it. But immediately, well, I wouldn't say immediately, but once I'm getting in the groups and I'm seeing the opinions, it's like, oh, you don't want to go there. You, know, you want to do PSA. PSA has got the better return value and all these things. And it's and it's right. You know, there is there is a. a there is an aspect there or not even an aspect there's a total truth there to how the market works and what people gravitate towards and and then i i get i think that's when it started to 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 click in me like okay how you operate in this social space in the social card world 
you know, there's going to be another element here. You can't just come in here with, oh, I love this because <laughs> you're going to get hit with, you know, the other side. Yeah, but is it profitable? <laughs> you making money mm. off of it? Yeah, I think that's so depressing. I mean, I think that's so, it's so depressing. It's so <laughs> depressing because that's not... It doesn't matter. It it it, it really yeah. and and it let, and you said it already so more eloquently than way more eloquently than I was than I would be able to sell it is that there is levels to the collecting. You know what I mean? And I think and it's unfortunate because there is a sense of purity to like seeing something you like grabbing it and be like, oh man, check this out! I found this. I'm so excited. And everybody like, what? That's cool. And I think a lot of like people are funny. <laughs> this is a weird story, but you know, people post things a lot and I'm always kind of like, wow, that's so cool. Blah, blah, blah. And I had this friend of mine who was kind of a little, <laughs> little odd. And the friend texts me and they're like, man, like, like, you really think that card's cool? <laughs> like kind of calling me out on my authenticity, my authenticity. And, uh, I was kind of like, you missed the whole point, man. It's not the card that matters. It's the the relationship that the person has yep. getting the card. Yep. Like, you, people are people get very confused. I think, and this is my personal opinion, on social media, that they think. Oh man, dude. I mean, who, dude? I've seen your name in comments pass around. I didn't know what you did. I didn't hear your voice. I didn't know how passionate you felt about this stuff. You know what I mean? And I love it. I think it's awesome. You sound. It's just really cool to meet you and stuff like that. And I think people get confused that when they read a text or they see a post, they think they understand the perspective that the person's coming to from when they post. And a lot of times we don't, and that's misread. Mm-hmm. A lot because of the way Facebook works in the wall format is that you're reading this post in this context of other posts. You could have seen a post before that made you angry and then you come to this next post and you're like, look at this guy, right? And I'll beat that out. And then, you know, they post something kind of negative. Um, And I think that's a lot of work for someone to do when they're on their downtime looking at Facebook, you know, to realize the context is driving them to say certain things. You know what I mean? And I think positivity wise and love and all this stuff is which sounds corny but man just being happy for someone is like not that much effort and i think right now a lot of people are on different journeys in their life in terms of saying you know oh but i just don't want this person to like not be able to get their value back and it's like you know you can have your opinions but at the same time like the value that you're talking about, Ian points this out a lot and, and is absolutely right. Value is not always monetary. You know what I mean? Sometimes you need to like get a card, get it shipped to you, experience it and be like, I got to show my friends online, mm-hmm. show everyone. And then everybody just be like, yo, that is dope. I love that card. I remember seeing like one of my favorite posts was someone posted a card that was like, you know, a card that wasn't like a hundred dollar crazy stupid card it was just an iconic marvel card and someone a friend of ours posted was like i have the original r if you want to see it and you're just like what <laughs> because it's just like oh man how often do you get to experience the art of the card and then people are showing that they go into cons and had artists the artists sign the card and they're all oh, the artists is really cool you know what i mean like that was the so cool thing about speaking to bill sinkovich right is that experience of seeing his work kind of translate from comic books to cards and his different thought process you know i just think that i don't know i I think people are coming at this from very different angles and i think a lot of people are there's just so much people are doing with cards now and it wasn't like that before you know you said you went to pokemon groups before and I can only imagine the whole landscape of Pokemon has changed. I mean, completely, right? I loved Pokemon as a kid. I still, my wife and I are playing Arceus right now, the newest game that came out for the Switch. And like, you know, we we, we love Pokemon and stuff like that. But, you know, the way Pokemon has evolved into having these guys flip by 3.5 million cases, getting them fake, their news things now, the Lionheart 90 show where you're buying packs for 3.99, it's an event. You know what I mean? It's there's a lot of monetary things being done with our nostalgia. And I think the groups are a special way to kind of keep it pure 
without necessarily losing that, which has been the saddest thing about the group so far uh, recently, like you posted in your post, which was a lot of people are like, is this expensive? Should I buy this? What do you think the trade value of this is? And it's great to be educated and it's good to have those conversations. But in a strange way, that kind of builds up the residue, Mm. right? It, It kind of... It's like this tar that starts forming on these little memories. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a sad sad thing it's starting well, to happen. You know, sorry to cut you off, but at the same no. time, you know, I, I don't want to knock individuals who are Agreed. coming into the space or who have been in the space for a long time and are are starting to see the value in the in the cards and are starting to strategize. Okay, you know what? I need to do this. This is a better decision for me, or I need to move these pieces around here, or I want to invest more in this space here. I don't, I don't want to knock those guys because it, they're having fun too. You know, this is exciting to them too. And, you know, I don't think it's fair for, for anyone is, you know, especially me to come in here and say, Oh, you know, people need to knock it off or no, no, no. People <laughs> are going to do what they want to do or works best for them. And for me, you know, this past year has really just, I don't want to say a challenge, but, uh, it's just coming to to a place where where I'm learning to become more comfortable with everyone's differences, you know, because when I came into the space again in 2020, 2021, I was excited to 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 be amongst you all. I was excited to to collect, you know, more than I did before. But I personally wasn't coming at it from a monetary standpoint. Oh, these are great investments or whatever. I was just having fun in the space. Mm-hmm. You know, as I saw, fun, you know, these are bad investments. Some of these investments are terrible, you know. But, but, you know, it's it, it's been a learning experience. It's been a learning process here. Seeing that you know we're we're different people here, and we're 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 bonded by by these cards here. And uh, it's it's a process. It's a process. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm finding it to be. You know, I I think I, I think keeping myself within the group and interacting with others. I think things did change with time for me. You know, I got to know people better. You know, and and as you say, they may post something one day, but you start following those posts and you start to get a bigger picture of who these people are. Mm. You know. Uh, just to share an example of because you know I brought up the the graded card thing, you know initially I, I got into the the it's a different group the Marvel graded card group, and I was sharing my cards and you know I, I kind of got the vibe like you know PSA is the way you know you're doing it wrong with SGC and I understood where they were coming from, um, but there was a yeah, you you know this person the graded gamer. Yeah, man. I, yeah. Yes, yes. I know that that she deals with PSA and you know she's been working with them and this is her space. And I for a bit I was feeling bad. I'm like, you know what? Am I like ruining her business here by coming into the space and, and saying that I'm a Marvel card collector and I collect SGC cards and her whole business is operated with you know, I, I'm nobody to, to knock, you know, a business like that, but you know, you, you're, you're you're ruffling feathers here. You know, you you've got to be careful. What, you know what you say or what you do. But there was a time that that she ended up liking some of my SGC posts, and it, it really, you know, I, I know it's it's silly. It's just the like. It's just the post. But it meant a lot. It was like, wow, if this person who's coming from this space, the PSA space, can like my SGC post. It really gave me hope, and you know, it it really opened my my mind and my eyes up. You know, people are not so rigid here. You know, people are are are, are open and and can see both sides. And it, it, it's such a small topic. I don't I don't even care about graded cards like that. You know, again, the, the conversation is more so to how we interact with each other. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful example. I think I think that's, you know, and I, I've had private conversations with with graded gamer, and man, she does not care what people grade their cards She's with. Amazing. She thinks it's awesome. She's, She's awesome. Like, she, she really is. And you know, it's that kind of kindness, though. Like you're saying, right? It's 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 not the example. It's the kindness that 
can just be paid forward. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, we're all and and I agree. There's no and I'm not hating on anybody's like decision on how to collect, right? There because it really is. I I think it's awesome all around. I mean, gosh, man, I can't tell you in the last year I've been pulled into so many different types of conversations about cards between like loving the card, talking about investments for the card, talking about grading cards, talking about cards coming up. I mean, it's been really (laughs) kind of dumb to see how many different conversations I can go into now. But at the end of the day, really, like I was just having a conversation with Ian about this. I did um, an IGTV with someone who collects Star Wars, and I dabble in Star Wars. And at the core of that conversation, too, it was just like, man, I remember being a kid and loving this stuff. And now I just, on my off time, I get to enjoy this and feel kind of connected to this. You know what I mean? But, but the interesting thing that crosses that crosses the, the, the that bridge from where you perceived greater gamer to be to where you are to where no one is to where i am it's for the love of the cards i mean that's where it stems from ultimately you know so um i mean we 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 know amanda quite well we've we've had uh, she's been on the show actually um and i'd I'd love her to come back actually um but she's um she's uh, a wonderful person really you know really um great to talk to and primarily she she loves the, the cards she, you yeah. know she's really into some of the stuff that she's into i'm like that's brilliant i love that you're flying the flag for that particular set or that particular design or that particular character because it's just viva la difference you know it's it's like something yeah. different on, on your news feed when you're scrolling through the instagram and the, the other thing to, to bear in mind with this i mean <clears throat> everyone kind of has different levels of 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 kind of uh, knowledge of this I, I tend to kind of have a little bit close to it because i work for a marketing agency so we obviously use facebook we use instagram we use twitter we use uh, tiktok snapchat all that sort of stuff for different channels for clients um and it's understanding how they will um show you stuff that they think you're interested in based on whatever algorithm so i've had posts i've put up where i'm like yeah i'll put this up and i'm sure people will really dig it and other people have, have, have said to me similar you know they're showing something off they really like it and it didn't get a good response in there feeling a bit like oh no oh, maybe maybe people didn't like it after all and i'm like no it's absolute bollocks because facebook yeah. decided it wasn't going to show your post to more people than this other one over here and that's all it is is just facebook deciding so i think if it was a completely <laughs> democratized level playing field on that front i think we, we'd all have a, a very different experience on social media but unfortunately that's not the case uh, the thing the thing to bear in mind is with facebook much more so than Instagram. I think Instagram's just as bad. Is that it's uh, the game is rigged completely. You know, oh, for they, sure. They, they will. They will. It's 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 what they want. It's the experience they want you to have, rather than the experience that you think you may be going to get. So, um, yeah. And unfortunately, that means that a lot of people. Some people, no, no, I'm not going to say a lot of people. Some people drive defensively. I think it's fairly the best way to phrase it um, on social media. A um, couple of people drive offensively, um, and that, that never goes down well in my view and indeed can lead to um, arguments and um, uh, ex- exclusions Disputes. and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think there is that, that, that sweet spot. And I think the, the unifying factor has to be for the love of the cards because that's what everyone's in the group for, you know, be it, you know, whether they're buying to, to grade and, and, and resell or whether they're, they're grading their collection just because they, they dig having graded cards or whether they just like filling their binders full of 90s base sets of Spider-Man cards, which is currently uh, <laughs> uh, wetting my whistle. He says, looking towards his uh, binder. I've just, oh, where did I put them? I'm, sorry, I'm completely <laughs> apropos of nothing. I'm going to find these and show them to you again. But where have they gone? Where have they gone? I am no, so do you remember I, sh- I, I showed you Yes, the, um, it's up to yeah. the left to the the right he'll yeah, be there for an brilliant. hour thank you He's i really that. love this that, I, yeah, yeah it's these these are just beautiful cards and, yes, they and they're kind of they're they're the um art box 2002 spider-man um film cards cards with a z I've, on I've the end i've never seen that that's amazing i like that but there, there's 72 of them and they're lovely there's a couple of insert sets and they're just really cool and they've got loads of like just but it doesn't really work with my face behind it but you get the gist of it and i love the transparency cards they're so underrated really cool and you know if you if you like your spidey 
as I think you might do, judging mm-hmm. what we've told us so far. Um, it's a nice set to get into, um, and I've just I've just kind of um, recently, well, fairly recently, you know, I was um, as I'm sure you've heard, I was chasing my tail and trying to collect everything, and it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work, uh, especially if you've got any semblance of a budget. Um, so uh, I think you know, n- n- narrowing it down. I think the one thing that the past year has actually taught me kind of pandemic time well first of all it's 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 you know made me you know for personal reasons address you know some overspending issues i have but secondly it's made me realize that actually with so much out there and with so many people going after so much stuff you can't kind of be you can't be trying to go in in the same direction as so many people that are going in different directions because it's very easy to think, oh, that car's going off to that, so I fancy that. And then the next day you say, oh, I fancy that as well as that <laughs> other car. Yeah, because I want my post to look that good, and I want it, you know, that that kind of vibe. Doesn't doesn't work. Doesn't work. <laughs> we end up coming out pretty quickly. Um, so um, I'm curious to know. So you you got into your sketch card. So what's since you've kind of dove in as it were, um, and and being less of a kind of a, a journeyman steering your own course and you've, you've, you've opened to all these groups and all these different collectors and all these different viewpoints and things. How, grading aside, how has your collecting changed? Have you, have you, what impact or what, what change have you felt to the way that you approach things, if any? Well, when, when I joined the groups back in 2020, 2021, uh, I put, I had all my cards in the closet. You know, I, I, I had bought a bunch of cards. I even my sketch cards, they were in binders, boxes. Uh, I shouldn't be ashamed of saying this, but you know, some of my cards were still in the shipping box that they were sent to me. I hadn't even opened them. A bunch of boxes I'd never even opened. I just know, oh, yeah, there's something in there. <laughs> and then I get the box. I don't even know what's in there and open it up. <laughs> oh, this said, yeah, I bought this years ago. Oh, it's like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff <laughs> and, and, and it's a weird thing because you're spending money on these things you're not even looking at them you're not even enjoying them but there's a piece of me that is oh well, i know it's in the closet somewhere i, I i've got that <laughs> but uh what's changed for me is uh when i joined i felt an obligation to, to get into my closet and, and to pull it all out see what it was that i actually had you know, there, a part of it was, you know, the, the market was moving in a certain way. And I said, oh, maybe I've got extras or something that I can sell off. Um, but once I saw everything that I had on my table, I said, this is this is too much. You know, this wow. is, you know, I could love the cards. I have a passion for the art or the stories, the characters. But this is hoarderish behavior here, you know, and. So for me, one of my big takeaways and and seeing how other people are collecting is that I I told myself that I really had to uh, I really had to focus in on on what it was that I like about these cards. And if I'm going to collect these cards, I need to I need to actually care about the cards that I actually that I'm actually collecting. It can't just be, you know, because I'm coming from a space where I was just checking everything off the list. You know, I don't have that. I want it. I don't have it. I got to get it. I got to get it. Yeah. But I'm in a space now where I'm like, you know, I don't need everything. I don't even want everything. And let me look at what I have. What's the connection here? Do I really care Mm -hmm. for this set? Do I really care for these cards? And, you know, it's it's been both a a clean organizing (laughs) process, (laughs) but it's. It's been matched with, with you guys and the groups and seeing how others are doing it and, and trying to understand why are certain collectors gravitating in, in, in that direction? Why is it that they care so much about that particular set or that card? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I've been learning from others and, you know, my research as far as like what works best for me and how do I see myself a year, five, ten years from now? What, what does my collection look like? I don't want it to look like how it looks like now. Now it's just a bunch of cards, a bunch of boxes and binders, and it doesn't it doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> you know, I just you know, so I'm just downsizing, and and I don't I don't know I, I don't know what what cards work best for me or what set works best for me. 
I, I've been so busy with my life, honestly, too. Mm. Kids <laughs> and, and work. Yeah, man. And, uh, but when I do find the time, it, it's great to just look at everything that I have and, and put things aside. Like, you know what? I don't care much for this. These are important to me. That's interesting. And, and I've been doing that with, uh, th- with my Instagram account. You know, I, I started an Instagram account where I'm sharing some of my collection and it was it was sparked by interacting with so many people online. And, you know, some people were, were contacting me like, hey, I see you're liking and you're interacting, but you don't have any cards on your page. Like, like what's going on here? And I said, yeah, you know, I, I'll just make a new page and I'll, I'll put the collection there. But when I started the page, I'm like, you know what, if this is going to be my page, if this is going to speak for me, then I only really want to put cards here that, that really mean something to me. Mm. And, and, and in doing that, I, I'm also finding out the cards that don't mean much to me. And... Um, I've forgotten what the question was. No, no, I think you, you nailed it, man. I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely obsessed with that answer. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it's true, man. I mean, I think it's really special that, I mean, gosh, man, Ian and I have been talking. It's so funny to hear like low key. Ian and I have been talking about this to each other for probably the same amount of time that you started looking at your collection and kind of figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know I've had the thought. I know Ian uh offloaded tons of sets because of that very Got thought. another load to go actually <laughs> yeah geez um for me it's funny you know the surfer thing I, I think a lot of people are having i think this is healthy you know what i mean i think this is what a lot of people need to be doing with their collections is kind of figuring out okay you mentioned fomo in your post which is just the the word of the year really you know what i mean for a lot of people and it's really hard to avoid fomo i'm usually really disciplined and i'm even getting sucked into it too you know what i mean like it's really tough to get it to get to get your head out, out of that space but like for me when i did the surfer thing it really was not that I had to have it all. It was like, well, you know, hell, let's let's you know, it's cool to explore all these surfer cards, <laughs> you know, and um, and buying them wasn't like it was like my only fun thing that I would buy myself. Like my wife and I would go out on these day trips, we go to a bookstore, or, you know, go somewhere or whatever target. And, you know, sometimes my wife and I are like, all right, we're going to buy each other toys. Let's do this. And then we run and we like try to get Legos or something stupid. Um, and I swear to God, I am 36. I know I sound like I'm 12, but I, but I am older. Um, but it was funny because like I would go do all this stuff and I'd be like, damn, I kind of just want this card on eBay right now. That's like 15 bucks and that's it. <laughs> that's kind of my my spending and my enjoyment right now is what I'm looking for. So that's kind of how the surfer collection kind of built up. And, and then it, just recently I've been having this thought for like a month now where I'm just like – because there's foreign cards, stickers and postcards and everything like that and everything's getting hyped up. And I'm kind of like – I have two giant Tupperware bins, Tupperware bins now where I'm looking at them and I'm like, ah, do I really want to keep doing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? This is getting kind of crazy. And, um, and you know, it's one a purchase every once in a while, but at the same time, you're kind of like, I've always enjoyed the feeling of being able to like, this is going to sound weird. And I'm going to get dirty looks from this and I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Uh, I feel very confident in what I'm about to say. I kind of like hugging my collection. I know that's weird. Hear me out before anyone thinks I'm really strange. What I mean by that is like when you have something like in a case or a chest or something or like in your display, you're kind of like, this is it. You know what I mean? You're not like open your hands and say, this is it. And you're just looking at a storage facility in Jersey and you're like, I'm spending a <laughs> lot of money on this <laughs> giant storage facility. You know what I mean? Like there's this weird thing that happens where you're kind of like, okay, this is, see this little binder here? My little baby. I'm good. <laughs> I don't yep. need to go too crazy on this. I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel that way too, but there's definitely something about that. No, de- well, definitely. I, I, I hear you. And, uh, yeah. You know, my, my mind's all over the place right now. But, uh, <laughs> you know, recently I've been getting really into like the NFT space. And I know it's been something out that's been oh, out for cool. a while. And there's a lot of hype and there's controversy and a lot of opinions on, on it. But as, from a person who enjoys collecting items, there's something about that space that speaks to me as a collector. Or with, with what you're saying, Norin, you know, 
hugging your collection, just having it all in one space. <laughs> There's aspects about collecting in different NFT projects that that allow for that, where it's just yeah. in one space. It's not in my closet, in my drawers, and then the storage unit, it's everywhere. No, it's all right here on the website. <laughs> and that's it. It's right there. And it's I, nice and, nice and organized. Thousands of items right there. You know, and, and that yeah. sort of appeals to me. But, uh, but I don't want to get sidetracked with, with that. No, I think a lot of people feel the same way about ComC, which is really interesting. You know what I mean? Is that like I've heard, gosh, I've heard from so many people being like, I don't have to worry about my collection. I live in a tiny apartment, New York or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, there's my collection. I can view it there. I can sell it from there. I can ship it home if I want, but I don't got to worry about it. And I think I think there is a kind of like evolution in that, right? And NFTs and cards being stored somewhere else where you feel like, okay, this is something I have without having to feel like I'm being swallowed alive by it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely, no, I see you. I'm with you on that one. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, no, I love to have my cards here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's different. Which is it's part, different part for you. Like, yeah. Because it's you don't part. have cards there at all. You basically, you know, getting everything shipped to you is, is oh gosh, just so much part of it. it. I don't know how you do it, man. Important. I do it. Well, you know exactly how I do it. I, I know exactly how you do it, but I feel it's who, rough, who man. ship over in batches for me. But, you know, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been, the, the, the thing is, I think I'm just, um, I'm in a phase now where I'm, I've am i really trimmed down my EPAC. I've still got a heck of a lot of cards to ship over, but it it, it, it's, it frustrates me that I don't have those cards. So I, it's, a, it's a bizarre uh, feeling. I know that they're there, and I can't wait to enjoy them, and I want to actually uh, like sort them, you know, because a big part of it is not just the ac acquiring them. Wow, that's quite a nice <laughs> set of cards he's got on his desk there. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, oh, David. <laughs> David has just oh, started showing man. us his... his Fat stacks is the only way I can kind of phrase that's that. That's crazy. That's about PHAT on that one. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> no, it's just organized. It's just to, to showcase some of the mess here. It's just, mate, it's yeah, really I guess. Mate, mate, I've got. I'm, hang working, on a minute. I'm working through it. It's, here we go. I've got stacks down there that I need to sort. Let me get out of the way of my camera. There's stack. There's binders there, uh, but then there's uh, there's stuff. No stuff everywhere. I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't cope. I can't cope. Um, <laughs> but at least it's in. It's in. A, it's in a better condition. Yeah, you know, it's in a better organized kind of thing now. You know, I know I've got my MCU stuff there. I've got my uh, comic stuff there. I've got my annual 2007 set, which needs to go into binder pages and in my oh, binder wow. so that's all there ready to go i've got my marvel anime hanafuda which i'm about to sell because i've decided you know what i like I've those cards a lot yeah those i've Hanna decided to part with anime have you seen those david have you gotten a chance to see those yet anime anime yeah. I'm I'm vaguely familiar with the set. I've not gone so hardcore into it. I, I don't know the differences. And uh, you're gonna flip out, it's man. It's all Pete really Momoko cool stuff, man. artwork, yeah. um, and it is basically Marvel done in a Japanese style. Um, there are chase sets <laughs> by other artists that 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 you, that engage with other elements of Japanese culture, like mechanized and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some uh, like cool those, little like there's yeah. capsule cards because those are big in mm -hmm. in Japan Absolutely. as well. So those are Hanafudas, and the Hanafuda is basically a card game in Japanese. I think it's, it's a Japanese a card black. game. Yeah, it's a matte black, completely matte black. It's very interesting texture. I like that. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, it feels like a canvas yeah. card, David. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. kind of yeah. It's weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're cool looking though, and there's yeah. like crazy short prints yeah. and stuff. I think. Yeah. I never went Pretty there with I've, with anime. I've de I've decided to part with it, which might surprise you, <laughs> given that it was my set of the year from from twenty twenty. But I, it's one of those things where I've just decided I can't I can't keep collecting. Oh, all these, see, that all doesn't sets. matter. Like, and it's lovely. But I've owned it. That's the thing. I've owned it. I've got the cat rainbow. I've got all four plates and every card from cat. You know, and yeah, man. enjoyed that set. So now I'm going to pass it on. Now, and a lot of people, you know, mess with me on that stuff, too, because they hear me be so positive about certain cards and then they see me like either offloading or I don't have a set of it <laughs> at all. But, you know, truth is, man, like and you guys understand this, we can have like a real conversation about this. I love experiencing Marvel cards. Yes. You know what I mean? I, and and that doesn't mean owning them. And I think that's the thing. A lot of people like you mentioned, David, are kind of. Mm coming to terms with is people are like, damn, I can enjoy this, but I don't necessarily have to find space for it. 
You know what I mean? And that's a hard thing to do, especially like the American kind of like mentality, because usually Americans are we enjoy it. We have it. You know what I mean? And that's that's kind of unfortunately what's in the ether over here in terms of how we how we, you know, declare ownership on things, unfortunately. But I don't know. I think a lot of people are getting past that now, especially like storing cards and moving cards. You know, I think I think that's slowly kind of like falling out of favor for a lot of people. I think it's changing. David, I'm curious to know. So obviously we've touched on your sketch card. So do you um, what's kind, what's kind of the biggest thing that you're um, collecting or enjoying at the moment or what sets or is there particular characters or artists? I mean, how's your uh, what, what, what I'm, I'm not even sure what you collect mm. apart from you mentioned sketch cards. Well, I, I uh, yeah, last year I, I got into the Marvel, uh, the X-Men metal. Okay. I did the X Men metal thing, and uh, it was okay at first. I was enjoying just collecting the cards. At the end of it, I was like, "Oh my goodness, how much money did I spend on this set?" <laughs> uh, you know, when I compare it to other sets, does it really hold? You know, but whatever. I've got my cards. I've got my set, and I guess I'm happy with it. It's in the closet now. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, Interesting. But uh. But with with my Instagram page, it's interesting because I'm finding myself looking at at the cards I have, and I'm like, oh, is this worthy of a post for me? You know, now maybe nobody would care, but do I do I feel that this card is worthy of a post? And in doing so, I find my I I have found myself uh, looking for certain cards for a post or to match with other cards. Oh, that's interesting, you know. That's so, you know, one, one of my last one, one of my more recent last posts, I had put up um, these uh, Marvel premieres, the, the, the classic corners and the, the classic covers. Yes. And I found it in my stash of stuff that I, that I had a couple of classic corners and I had a couple of classic covers, but I didn't have like matching pairs the way I had that that post has a matching pair so recently I, I found myself you know looking through ebay's or scanning wherever to see if i could find some of those matching pairs but but that's that's pretty much the extent of like what i'm looking at these days yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited for spider-man metal and i'm hearing Fleur ultra avengers or what you know that that sparks my interest but uh I'm not really combing for anything in particular. I mean, I, I've got Marvel Premiere 2012. I mean, 2012 as uh, as one of my search items. There, I, I've no. it's a set I want to complete. And I have an extra surfer if you need it. You can have it for free. Just tell me. Oh wow, wow, that'd be very appreciative. Wow, thank you. Do you That's need awesome. it? You need it for your set? I may. For just text me you know you just pm me i have an extra one i ha I had it i just found it actually in the binder and i just organized it so i'm like oh why not just <laughs> just pm me or whatever but oh, yeah that's a fun set man that that's a i like 2012 a lot that's a really fun set that's the one i went in on back in when it came out I it's remember, gorgeous man. yeah i went in on it when it came out but um i didn't actually i don't think i actually bought i didn't buy any of the product i just bought stuff off ebay yeah um because uh, you couldn't get it over here, so I was um, I almost had a complete base set at one point. Oh, your cat's joined the party! Hey, oh, yeah, she's there. Um, and um, um, it was great. But even at the time, I remember those classic corners and the other um, inserts were just like people were just like going nuts for them at the time, and they were difficult to get at the time of the set release. So I can't even imagine ten years on trying to complete some of those chase sets. It took me a while to find the um, the classic corner surfer. Like I think I think I was even telling you about it back in the day, Ian, that I couldn't I've never, find I've it. I've never seen that classic. Oh, corner it's good. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you the surfer one. Yeah, no one's no one's gonna no one's gonna. It's, it's, it's always good when no one goes to his pelican case because you know. You know what? I don't time. need this. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. There's no Everyone disc. There's no shade. No, Everyone there's no shade. I'm gonna put no, it right next I'm, to me. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually, um, I'm actually um, complimenting you by saying that every time you go to your case, what you pull out never disappoints. Oh, shush. it's all killer, no it's filler. Just it's just crazy. It's just, yeah, and it's, I saw your cat. Just consider a naked silver dude. There. No, but okay. your cat. Your cat looked and thought, "Can I get in there while he's got the case?" No, on? she knows she'd live outside <laughs> in the snow. I'm just She's a great cat. She's a great cat. 
Oh, wow. Oh, there goes your sniffle cold. green. Wow. That, that looks really cold. good. They're really nice, and they're patches based on the classic corners of like comic like books. It's not the Marvel Flare ones, isn't it? The pieces of Flare. Yeah. Yeah. Some... And, and, you know, I, I know I know the patch thing is just a little gimmicky type of thing, but I, I just love the history behind that classic corners, and, and you see how much the comic was worth. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's just... The subject matter matters when you do the patches. It's kind of like the MCU Black Diamond, right? Like the logos of the movies look really cool. So it just, it makes sense. Like, I don't like the ones where it's just like the character. You know what I mean? Or like some random art. Like there's no like historical thing like you said, David. Yeah, I agree. This took a while to find. This was harder to find than than some other of the bigger pieces, which is weird. I've never seen that. What I love, they don't, they don't show up for some reason. I don't know why. I'll tell you what, what I love about the pieces of Flair ones from 2019 Flair is the um, the artwork on the front is it's obviously, you know, it's a recreated like, as a piece of you know, material within the card. I like but that's that. Bill Sinkovich artwork. Mm. And then you see the whole, you know, you see the issue front cover on the back, and they're just, they're just lovely. They're just they're so, nice. There's something really evocative to to a Marvel fan about about the corners, uh, yeah. which is what I love about Joe Jusco doing his oh, uh, yeah, corner cool. um, uh, recreate, uh, which he's still doing. He started doing more as well. Um, I just wish they'd bring those out as a set. Come I had a shot <laughs> at the at the original art for the Silver Surfer one by Jusco, the classic. Oh, one. well, you're I kidding me! I, I told I told my wife I was like, "Look, it's just a cardboard box for six months. Why can't you live like this? Let's live simply. Um, why can't we just be better?" But no, the pieces of flair are pretty cool, actually, because and also there's oh yeah, that great piece. He did such a good job. He's such a beast. What a beast. <laughs> But the pieces of flair is really cool, David. Have you seen the the pieces of flair where the Hulk in the classic corners is like uh is like he's breaking out in anger? Yeah, it develops. Yeah. Have you seen? Right. Oh, it's. I'm not oh seen. my god! I'm gonna send you pictures. It's really cool looking. It's really cool looking. It basically it was really what smart, comic yeah. did. Yeah, you know, for issue after issue, it was. Yes. It was. It, it was changing to reflect the storyline, I believe, and so. Yeah the image changed with each issue and so what they've did with the pieces of flair is that you had consecutive flare cards that that did that i think it was for the short print or the ssps actually so it was actually yeah it, it, one to, yeah they can probably yeah. be hard to find um, but, but like it was like a building up of something yeah they are kind of expensive i mean the short super short print is 50 with the best offer that's not terrible i think i'm missing about three of them anyway I, I don't know. Nice. I'm uh, yeah, sorry. But um I just think the um and that that's the that's the beautiful thing. Yeah, we've 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 kind of touched on some things that are actually just really cool. Not necessarily pumpable items or <laughs> investor items, they're just things that we're nice. really collecting. Um and I think I think that's what's so um someone was bemoaning the fact that it was all posts about selling stuff and it was all posts about you know where people were getting a bit 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 frisky with each other uh, to, to, to <laughs> say the least um which you know we, the, I, and and one of the one of the interesting things you brought up on on your thing david is that you mentioned you know whether we'd seen uh, over the period of time that the group's been running and that we've been kind of in there because the group's coming up four years um uh, soon whether we've seen kind of trends and and i guess i guess yes we have and it's it is it is for gutsy out there at the moment i think it's the best way to phrase it um is completely bonkers um but we have had bonkers periods before but everyone's completely different and they're there for different reasons i think with 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 covid obviously every everything's gone a bit nuts um and it's had so many knock-on effects not least of which you know the sets actually being able to be released on time um you know production quality of the sets but from you know from from what you talked about which was you know back in 2020 everyone suddenly okay i can't go out can't go to work what's in my closet oh yeah let's get in there let's let's, let's have a dig oh i quite like these let's go online let's buy some and everyone had the same idea at exactly the same time so i think we're just seeing the the kind of the knock-on kind of second third fourth wave of that resurgence in people enjoying their hobbies 
I don't think there's anything bad with that. Um, I just think it's a little bit of growing pains. But um, but one of the things that that I said to this person who was posting and you know just having a bit of a bit of a moan was you know post you know post some more stuff you love. You know, just you know post what you're collecting, post what you're into. Don't you? <laughs> if, if you know you you have the opportunity to to kind of change the channel on that. Because, you know, it's a group where everyone contributes and everyone can post. Or you can just sit there and, you know, just, just watch and enjoy and, and soak it up, as some people choose to do, you know. Um, but I think everyone's got the opportunity to be part of that and, and shape uh, that narrative. Um, so, you know, my challenge back to the guy was, well, you know, post some stuff. Post your collection. Post what you're into. You know, that's all you can do. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day. <laughs> For the love of the yeah, cards. There was, there was, you know, a, a little bit of drama the other day with, with, a, with a trade that, that went bad. And, uh, you know, a lot of emotions came out of that. I, I felt terrible for it. You know, I wasn't even involved. And, you know, the group has to do what they have to do to, to manage, you know, the crowd control let's say crowd control <laughs> you know you, you, you've got to implement some sort of crowd control when these when these events happen and that's very understandable and i found myself you know i wanted to express something and i did like a little pose where i was just upset oh i you know we should be allowed to express ourselves in these situations and you know i i removed the post within a couple of hours and you know i eventually put a post about the cards you know, because that that's what that's what we're here about. We're about the cards. And, yeah. You know, I don't want to feed into the drama and the situations and people and picking sides. And it's it. You mentioned growing pains. It's a bit of growing pains mm. being a part of mm. these communities. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. Unless it's the fit card, it's only got two sides anyway. So, you know, just pick the yes. front or the back. You know, you can be part of the front or you're going to be part of the back. I like yeah. that. I might use that. I might use that. Um, have you got a, have you got a favorite um, sketch artist that springs to mind? Anyone you really dig? Anyone you've, um, you've liked or gone after or? Yeah. There's, there's so many amazing artists out there. They're all wonderful. They're all very, very wonderful. It's not a trick question. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm honestly terrible with names, though, and oh, okay. that, 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 that's an aspect that that I like about what's happening now with, with even like my Instagram page and putting cards online is that I'm forced to look at the cards. I'm forced to research mm -hmm. who did this sketch, who is this artist. You know what? Let me connect with this artist. You know, let me thank them for the work that they did. Yes, and and now it's on my page, and I've got artists right linked right onto those images. Oh, cool. And, but um, to throw out an artist out there, I, I believe their name is uh, Jomar Bolda or something like that. Oh, yes. oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. Sorry about that name there. But uh, for some reason, the, their artwork has always attracted me. There, there's something very moody about what they how, how they depict characters and situations. There's... No There's something really something, special. So yeah. this this was crazy. So this one, um, that's oh, the that's star nice. right there. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I saw this. This is so ridiculous. This was like on some random post on Google Images, and you know how it is when you're like looking for sketch cards and characters, where you're just like anything on Google Images, I'm saving to my mm -hmm. desktop and will drool on it forever. I saw this card years ago, years ago. Messaged a guy on eBay who was selling uh, sketch cards, and he happened to have it. I okay. couldn't believe it that I found the one that I had been googling, like been eyeing forever. It's just something. It's weird, right? Because like you're right. It's like the artist does something where it's like the details are not necessarily there, but the ones that matter are there. You know what I mean? And it just like it puts the picture in your head just enough for you to like go and go with it. Like it's just so special. I I love this artist too. Yeah, and he, and it's great, man. Tagging artists on Instagram and showing cards and like building up those relationships. Those are awesome, dude. That's that's what it's about for me. That's what I love, man. Love that. That's a good idea. It is cool. I mean, it, what I love about the um, 
about the about online interaction like that, especially with the groups, is is when the artists are kind of with us and engaging as well. Yes, that's pretty cool. Very um, cool. Which um, kind of goes in goes in waves. Obviously, you know, some artists come in when they've got work to show, or you know, like annual recently, we had a lot of artists kind of come in, and you know, I've been given the go ahead to share my sketch cards for this set, and you see loads of stuff, and you might not see them again until the next set, which is absolutely fine. You know, it's good to know that they're working away and creating these sketch cards, um, and then others just kind of hang out and live in the group, and you know actually um engage and do live live streams in the group you know people like dre and jay lynn and uh Muncher and people like that so um they're all you know great cats to have in, in the community which is which is really good um I, w- I wasn't sure if we we had anything else to um um touch on from your questions i'm just having a look here because there was so much in there um there was one last one that you asked, which I thought was really interesting, and I think we might circle us into into land. Um, See, so you asked, um, you're no longer just regular collectors; you're in the spotlight. You sit at the round table. You're the admin and the experts in kind of speech marks, as you put it. Just a single word expressed by one of you can literally cause an uproar. <laughs> Probably more knowing than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, get out of here! Yeah, it's like you're, you're like the pharaoh in the Ten Commandments. So let it be written. So, let so it be bus. Um, anyway, <laughs> <You're so full laughs> of crap. Um, um, and I wonder, do you ever feel burdened or uncomfortable in these positions? In these positions, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that because we are kind of more visible i guess by choice because we you know do the podcast and i'm an idiot i should have stayed hidden i don't know what the hell was wrong with me <laughs> ian talked me into this and that was it and then of course my dumb ass likes attention so of course i'm just like hi what's going on hi guys um, hi guys what's happening <laughs> um no it's really stupid it's really stupid i wish people it was really weird actually because there was a whole thing and people hit me up and they, they told me that they were like yo you can't you know you say stuff and you didn't say anything directly but people assume things you say so you know people get upset and it's weird too because no, I'm not getting paid for any of this. This is just stupid, kind of like, like my wife right now is like, "What are we eating for lunch?" And I was like, "I know, honey. I got ten more minutes of this, and then we're gonna eat whatever you. We're gonna we're gonna go get pizza and have fun." Um, so it's very much like off time just for fun and stuff like that. But I have really enjoyed talking to people. As weird as that is for me, because I'm usually more of an introvert, which I'm sure no one would ever assume that. Um, it's kind of awesome, dude, because like, man, I did not grow up with friends that like, I'm not going to put a period on that. Um, I didn't grow up with friends who were into uh, Marvel cards like this, you know, and there's like, and now like, I think I'm going to go to um, Atlanta, uh, the culture con or whatever it is. I think oh, wow. I'm going to go and, and see some people in person, which should be pretty fun. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and eventually we'll have like something where we have like a Marvel con and get everybody together and do like a big party oh, yeah. or whatever, you know, once all this crazy end of the world stuff stops happening. Um, but I don't. Yeah, it is. I, I definitely feel that pressure. I don't. I mean, hell, I stopped doing videos as frequently as I did because of that pressure. I didn't want to show stuff or talk about stuff that would a put pressure on people. B cards to like disappear that I would still like. You know what I mean? <laughs> as, as as selfish as that is, it's, it's strange. It's real. I know Ian and I have done it on the podcast where we're just like, well, we can't talk about that today because <laughs> we'll never be able to finish the set or whatever the case is. Or or you know, like I don't know. I definitely puts pressure on me. I'm sure it does for Ian too. Being 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 as big as you are, brother. I mean, I'm sure. Well, you know, I don't know about I don't know about big in terms of waist waistline but um i've put on two pounds this week <sighs> more to love baby don't don't yeah. no body shame yourself yeah no i'm always body shaming myself i was a fat kid i love you know <laughs> i am a fat kid I, so i'm yeah. finding this very offensive <laughs> well, there is that, there is that. There is that. <laughs> david david's a fine figure of a man there um hey, you got all it, the swagger in the world son damn <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, put, put, put it this way. One of us would probably be able to not put their back out when they're clearing their own driveway, and it wouldn't be me, me or you, Norrin. So, um, oh, well, okay, okay, let's calm down. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I am. Um, it, it's bizarre. I think the the the, the challenge. I always find it. Cha- I, there are ways that I want to kind of interact more with other collectors but you know I, my main challenge is time zones so you know hence the, the group thing was kind of a no-brainer for me to set up uh, but that's become so bonkers you know i'm actively trying to step back from it now um hence you know uh, us having some new mods come aboard and things like that which and they're a great group of group of guys um so i'm kind of actively trying to step back from it but also for me it's just the I find myself having to pinch myself sometimes because we, we, there's a little bit of rare air, as um, to, to paraphrase our friend Eugene's um, kind of a uh, handle. Um, when you find yourself within the space of a week talking to people like Hildebrand, Bianchi, and Sinkovic, it's it's a bit it's a bit bonkers. There was a, there was that little period where we went where we were going after those big guys because we had downtime during <laughs> during during the lockdown and things like that, and we were creatively kind of uh, inspired to do so. Um, and I think necessarily so, we've maybe become a little bit more introspective in terms of the hobby and what we're talking about over the last three four months. Um, and I think that's necessary because I think people have dug 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 that and i think we we've possibly um used to talk about sketch artists all the time and we've maybe started to talk less about that rather of late so i think there's trends in terms of topics and themes that we talk about and it's all reflective at the end of the day we're not we're not trying to you know uh, lead the discussion we're actually kind of trying to be reflective of the dis- the discussion that's being had if that, if that makes sense also, too, like a, uh, yeah. a, a big part of it is Ian and I just get together a week and talk. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, yeah, there is that. We talk that often. <laughs> there is that. There is that. We get, we get to we get, get to actually talk to another collector and actually just talk about, can you believe the f- we've put up with this week? <laughs> can you believe what's going on? Um, and there's often about half an hour of that before we even start recording. <laughs> so, um, and, and we don't record any of that, so it's not going to be on the outtakes. Um, but... Um, yeah, David. I don't know if if we've we've touched on all the points um, that you raised, but I think what you wrote was beautiful, and I love it. Um, now I know you took the comment down on Facebook, um, the, the, your your kind of questions, because there was a last part of it that that was on a slightly different subject matter, and I, I kind of messaged you directly on that because because it was it was more about interactions between people in different groups and things like that. So. Um, and I said, yeah, that's not the sort of thing I'd put out in the public domain. But the rest of it, would you be happy for me to repost it along with this podcast? Yeah, sure. Sure. Because um, mm-hmm. I think it would really, I think it says some really interesting stuff that you wrote in there. I think it's it's fabulous. And I, I thank you for your, um, your thoughtfulness um, on that. I think it's great that you you come at this with an open mind i think i love the way that you um ask questions and reflect on it and embrace it in the same paragraph it's brilliant i love it so thank you i really appreciate you being in the group and seriously right, man thank you for having a space to allow me to do that to allow oh, me to express so myself and, and to share in these things that we all share well, you found us. Love it. You're one of us. One of one us. Of us. One, one of us. us. One <laughs> of us. Um, I will. Um, when we get off, when we when we finish recording in a moment, before we let you go, because I'm sure you probably need to get to bed. Um, you will choose our intro artist from a list of of wonderful things that I will share my screen and you can choose <laughs> who will open this episode. Um, and that that is no way a trick question. And there is a list of. Over 85 of them I have here. Um, and you can choose whomever you would like to Thank open you. the episode that's about you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, where can people find you on Instagram, David? What's your handle? On Instagram, that would be David's, David S. Dot PC. Great. David's PC. Great. I will. You know what? Uh, are we following each other? 
Because there are so many uh, names on Instagram. I've got no idea. I'll make sure that's happening. Um, I'll put a link to your Instagram feed on the tasting notes with your blessing as well so that people can um, and, and give, give David a follow. Um, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of wrap us up. Uh, in, a, in a moment, David, I think you know how I'm going to ask you to kind of end the episode. So brace yourself. Prime yourself for that enjoy collecting moment. He's literally physically bracing himself. He's looking a bit worried now as well. <laughs> I'm just going to say there's a lot going on in the hobby right now. Isn't that right, guys? It is. See, see, yes, lovely. There we yes, go. Yes. Uh, we thank you for making our show part of your hobby experience. As ever, let us know if you're enjoying our podcasts. Rate, review, and subscribe to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And on our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter. Find us at the MCC Pod. Send us emails at the MCC Pod at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail. I'm not going to read that link out because it's a really long link. Um, David, you've been gorgeous. Norrin, you're always gorgeous. Uh, Norrin's cat, you're just hairy. And uh, yeah. What else can I say? David, you know how we, we wrap up the show? Enjoy collecting. Thanks for listening to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast. Visuals and tasting notes for each episode can be found on our Facebook page. You can subscribe and leave us a voicemail via our home on anchor.fm forward slash mccp. We're also on iTunes, Spotify and all major podcast platforms. Please take a second to subscribe, like and review our show wherever you get your podcasts. Our podcast can be found by Googling at the MCC pod, which will also find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Our Facebook community is at MCCW, Marvel Card Collectors Worldwide, and MMC, Marvel Masterpieces Collectors. The great music we use is called Rocket Power by Kevin McLeod. Thanks to the collectors, artists, and creators who support the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. We'll see you next time. And remember, it's a small hobby, but a fun one. Make mine marvel and enjoy collecting. Wouldn't you-